Programming endurance for athletes requires a ton of consideration. You have to think about strength training, speed work, impulse capabilities, cardio, and the demands specific to that sport. I'm gonna show you how you can program for endurance for all athletes. And we're gonna start, right? Nah. Programming endurance for selective athletes has a lot of different things we need to consider. You need to begin by breaking the totality of training down into different components. So when we're looking at athletes, the first thing that I like to do is look at the entire sport and think about what is the work to rest ratio. And fortunately on PubMed, there's also a ton of research across different sports that has already been done that tells you What's the work to rest ratio for say lacrosse versus say soccer versus say American football, anything along those lines. So then we can deduce how much endurance might be needed for those specific sports. After we look at that endurance, we can go down and say, okay, how much strength is needed for these specific sports. So then the next aspect, how much impulse training is needed for that specific sport for them to be very, very explosive. Then that next aspect, how much locomotion is involved? How much actual high speed running versus slower speed running is actually being done in their competitive situation? But how do you actually do that? For this discussion, we're gonna cover off season training. So off-season training is where we're going to really try to develop the volume of the athlete, meaning how much time can they spend actually training for their sport or how much time can they spend even doing the competitive actions or skills of their sport. The next aspect is we have to develop the size of the athlete. And this might be different from sport to sport. So if we have an offensive lineman for football, we want them to get bigger in most cases. If we have a cornerback in football, we don't want them to get too much bigger. We wanna analyze their body size and predict where the best size will be for that specific individual. That's gonna take us into the muscle mass of the athlete. So now we have to look at how much lean muscle mass does this athlete require for them to be be successful in their sport. Look at a sprinter. Sprinters can require a bit more lean muscle mass than say a 5K runner or a 10K runner. And then we look at specific problem areas for those sports as well. So we have to analyze what are potential injuries if we have a wrestler or a swimmer or a 5K runner or a football player, and then how are we gonna build our training around those potential injuries? All fine and good, but now I can hear you guys behind the screen saying, that's great but what does any of this have to do with endurance? Remember, this is about programming endurance for all athletes. Not all endurance is going to be the same. To illustrate that, let's look at a football player here and then look at a 5K distance runner here. So when we compare those two, there will be a substantial difference. And when we start, we have to look at out of season, we're gonna focus on trying to build volume specific to the endurance needed for those athletes. We're gonna be identifying how big the actual athlete is, right? So how large are they? How big's the football player? How big's that 5K distance runner? Then we have to look at actual muscle mass, okay? How lean are they or how much lean muscle mass do they have? And then finally, we need to look at what potential problems might we run into. And so for that football player, we might be focusing on, let's get their glutes bigger. Let's get their quads bigger. Let's get their shoulders even bigger. Plyometrics, some speed work, some big upper body work. Ultimately, that's gonna mean let's get them stronger inside of the weight room so that they can have a higher capability of impulse expression. The football player has to run fast and they have to be able to repeat that speed on a regular basis with a specific rest time designated by the actual competitive sport. Some unique ways that we can get that endurance would be get some bigger guys on an assault bike, get them to increase their VO2 max on an assault bike because there's less pounding on their body. If we've got somebody like a running back or a linebacker, we can do 10 sets of 10 meter sprints where we run 10 meters as fast as possible, slow down over a 10 meter time frame, and then repeat that for those 10 sets. And then a simple way to increase overall endurance-based volume is to just get into the sauna four to five days a week if your school has access to something along those lines. But ultimately for a football player, traditional endurance should only be about 10 to 15% of their total programming volume. That's all they need in the off season, but what about that 5K distance runner? And this may catch you off guard, but the distance runner also needs more size just like the football player. 
However, the distance runner needs more size by creating more blood volume. That's where that size is from, the blood volume. And to do this, 5K runners have to increase their pace over long periods of time. So they've gotta do training over very long periods. This can be an hour to two hours of longer runs. And that's gonna to lead to more blood volume, which in turn will lead to more mitochondrial volume, which in turn ideally will lead to a greater amount of ATP production. Now, when we're also looking at distance runners, we also need to program some twitchiness. And the way I look at twitchiness for a 5K runner, yes, I do think about plyometrics to a point, but I also think about high intensity interval work. So if we're doing about 15 to 20% of our training volume around endurance-based training with high intensity interval work, that's gonna train our heart to pump more explosively, meaning it's gonna get more volume throughout the body and in turn, now this individual will indeed be able to hold a much higher pace within a race for a much longer period of time. But what does all that mean for the athletes? So when programming volume for endurance athletes, what ends up happening is that we want to see greater volume, which in turn leads to an adaptation of greater blood volume. And then when there's a greater amount of blood volume, we will see an adaptation that will lead to greater capillarization. We're now gonna see that there's gonna be greater oxygen transportation from the lungs into the muscles. Now this 5K distance runner can take more oxygen into their muscles and they can produce greater amounts of ATP. If they can produce greater amounts of ATP, they can now sustain a greater pace for a longer period of time. Thus, they're running faster if they're in a specific race or just by having a higher pace or a faster pace, now, when they get more training volume, they can continuously push themselves quite a bit and then lead to those faster times. What ends up happening is that there tends to be greater ground reaction forces every time that we plant. So to sustain our stability, our structural integrity, we should be doing about five to 10% of our training based around strength training to prevent injuries. But what else is there? Primarily when programming, we have to establish how much impulse work is there gonna be, how much strength work, how much speed work, and how much endurance work, okay? So we have to create some sense of a profile. Force velocity profiling, I do not believe is the most effective, mainly because there is not an inverse relationship between force and velocity. I think it's more effective to create a profile for specific sports and specific athletes based off impulse, strength, speed, endurance. And so if we're looking at football players, okay, we're gonna have 25% of their training be impulse based. So that might be plyometric based. That might be even in the weight room doing things like unbroken at certain percentages, at certain tempos. Then we're gonna look at the football player for strength based training. And this is gonna be a general analysis. Inside of our strength training at peak strength, one thing that we do is we try to separate football players into, okay, we got QBs, we've got running backs, and we've got linemen. So this percentage will be slightly different based upon the position. Overall, if we look at strength, most football players will be in the weight room 35% of their time. Then we can look at that speed work. About 25% of their training should go towards some type of speed work. This could be hill sprints, this could be sled sprints, anything like that, right? Even running mechanics. And then finally, endurance should make up check out that sweet lungs with the heart, should make up about 10 to 15% of their overall training. All right, and if we compare that to that 5K runner, we might see 10 to 15% of their work is impulse-based, so some type of jumping, maybe even some type of faster lifting. Then we look at their strength work. We've gotta make sure that they have some type of stability, some type of structural stability, so that they have injury prevention. That's gonna be about 10%. Then we start to look at speed and endurance. Think about Nico Young, he just broke the 5K NCAA record, he just won the NCAA title. He is extraordinarily fast. And that speed work will be about 25% of their overall training. Okay, and then endurance work is gonna be about 50% of their overall training. That could involve high intensity interval work, that could be including some of their longer distance work, okay? So this is all stuff that we try to use inside of our app Peak Strength. If you guys need help with your training, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store, and you'll see there's a little bit of a breakdown along these lines, and we're even in the process of going more in depth with that speed and endurance, because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.